Let's combine two new Inertia features to build out a really easy infinite scroll in our application. It's worth noting that in the future, we're expecting an infinite scroll component in itself within Inertia. So by the time you've watched this, that might already be available. If it's not, we can go ahead and build it out ourselves with not much trouble. Okay, so let's get started on creating out a model that we're going to use for this. We're going to go ahead and use an article as an example. We'll create a migration of factory and a cedar alongside of this. Okay, let's open up the create articles table and let's just fill this in with some data. So of course, we're going to have a title in here. So let's go ahead and add in a title and we'll go ahead and add in a teaser to this as well. And I think that's just about it for now. Okay, so let's, before we migrate this, open up our article factory and let's go ahead and define out how we want to fake this data. So let's say title and we'll say fake sentence and let's give that six words and we'll do the same thing for the teaser here and just bump that up to maybe 30. Okay, let's go ahead and migrate what we have here. And now that we've done this, we want to be able to seed the database. So if we open up the article seeder, we want to do this, but we want these in a very specific order. So usually to seed data in a particular order, I'll go ahead and use a sequence within a factory. So we can use our article factory. We can go ahead and create that out, but in between that, choose how many records we want here. Let's go ahead and bump this up quite high to say a thousand. But we want to make sure that the created at date increments here. So a little tip that I use is create out a sequence and then use the index that we get back in the sequence within this factory to go ahead and increment the date. So to do this, we just want to go ahead and return and adjust the created at date. And what we'll do is take the current date and time, but modify it for every single record that we create. So we can add on some days to this using the sequence index. By doing this, that's going to go ahead and increment that created that date. And then we're going to have them in a nice natural order. OK, so now that we've done this, let's go ahead and run DB seed here and let's run this for the article seeder. OK, so if we open up our database now and take a look at articles, you can see that for the created at date, the day increments for each one. So this is going to make it much easier to see what we're doing when we're outputting a list of these articles. OK, so let's build out a specific articles page for this. So let's go and hit this in the browser and we'll go ahead and fill this in. OK, so we'll create out a controller just to keep things nice and tidy. So let's create out an article controller here and we'll go over to our web route and we'll just define this out anywhere. So let's go ahead and just set this to slash articles, reference that article controller, and we'll just make this invocable. Okay, if we open up our article controller, let's create out that invoke magic method. And let's go ahead and just return an inertia response here. And we'll render out a page called articles. And of course, we'll pass all of them articles down to the view. We'll modify this slightly in a minute. So we're just going to say article latest and get okay so we can go ahead and create this component now so let's go into resources js and pages and let's create our new view component in here called articles let's go ahead and add that and we'll just start by adding a defined props in here taking in our articles which is going to be an array and then we'll just dump them out on the page for now in fact let's copy over the dashboard template that probably makes a lot more sense and let's just slightly modify this. So define props, articles, going to be an array. And we'll go ahead and just dump them somewhere here. Let's change the title of this page as well. And the header up here. And let's do the same and just dump all of the articles. OK, great. So we've got a thousand articles in here. Let's go through and just make these look a little bit better, first of all. So we'll start with a div wrapper in here. And we'll say v4 article in articles. Let's go ahead and key this by the article ID. And then let's just add in a wrapper inside of here. And let's do this slightly differently, actually. Let's go ahead and just grab all of this and we'll wrap each article in this container. So just so we have something to play with like this. And we'll pull this in and we'll just dump each of the articles out in here, just so we've got a, as much space to work with as possible. And let's go ahead and space these out on the y axis by three. There we go. Just so we've got enough room to scroll. 
Okay, let's just fill in some really basic data about this. So we'll create an H2 for each of these for the article title, and then we'll put, create a paragraph out for the article teaser in here as well. And we'll just start these up really quickly as well. So we'll set the text to extra large and font to semi-bold. And I think that will just about do. Okay, so we've got a thousand articles on the page at the moment, which is obviously not great. So where do we start here? So before we had the ability to merge in props or use when visible, we would probably do something like this. We would paginate this data out. We would go over to our articles and update this to articles.data. But we would probably take this data and store it locally up here in a ref. And then we would go ahead and request the next page and then take the data from here and push it on. We've covered this before on Code Course, but we want to make this a lot more effortless now that we have these two features. OK, so I've paginated this. Um, but the problem is we can't use merge for a paginate object. We don't have the ability at the moment, at least, to deep merge. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the paginated articles. So let's go ahead and call them articles up here. And we're going to go ahead and for the articles data, we're going to explicitly extract out the items, but make these mergeable. So let's use merge in here. We'll give this a short closure. And from articles, we'll extract out the items. So we'll still only get 10 here because we're paginating up here. But what we can also then do is separately send down the articles pagination data. So let's send that down separately. And to do this, we just use articles and two array. If you need any tips on this, if we head over to the length aware paginator and just take a look at the methods here, we've got two array, which gives us all of the data about the current page, the pages that we have, and we can use this to control our pagination. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's hop back over to articles. We can get rid of data now because we're not directly using that paginator. We still have 10 items. So the goal here is to, first of all, create a button in here that we can click to append the next set of articles on. And we know that because we are using merge here, that's giving us back an array. These will be pushed as we looked at a little bit earlier in the course. So let's go over to articles and we will create out a button just down here to load more. We'll just keep this really simple for now. And in fact, what I'm actually going to do as well is go ahead and just include the article ID in here, just so we can see that we're loading these in properly. OK, great. So the next thing that we need to do is over in our articles, hook this up to a method. So let's go ahead and call this load more. So when we click on this, we'll load more. And let's go ahead and create that method just at the top here to load more. We don't even have to create a method for this. We could do it all in line if we wanted to. OK, so to do this, we'll go ahead and use our router. So let's make sure we pull that in from Inertia V3. And we'll go ahead and reload here, passing in the data that we need to pass in, which is the new page. So what we have in here as well is the articles pagination data which will be an array or an object because it's cast to an object. And then we can basically pass along the new page. So the new page is going to be from our props, which we can go ahead and name here. And we're going to take the articles pagination, current page, and we can add one to that. And then down here, underneath our data, we can only load in articles, articles pagination. In fact, let's rename this just so it's a little bit more consistent. So we'll say underscore pagination. And we should be good. OK, so we'll get the initial data down. But when we click load more, this will increment the current page that will be sent along with a request in the query string or the request to this. And we should get page two. It will reload the articles, which remember are merged, and it will give us back the new page in articles pagination. Let's take a look. So let's scroll down. Let's click on load more. And there we go. You can see, sure enough, it's now loading more in. So just that on its own is a lot simpler now that we have Inertia V2 with the merging option. We haven't had to merge these manually at all. We just basically send another request down and this data gets merged in. Now we can create an infinite scroll using the when visible component, and we're not going to need this load more method. I'll leave this here just in case you do want to use it, but let's go ahead and switch out this load more button 
for when visible. So let's go ahead and pull in when visible, like we've already seen. We know that in here we want to take in the params that we want to send down with this request. So there's a couple of ways that we could do this. What we're now saying is basically these params are going to be the things that we would normally pass to our router replace method. So the params that we're sending down is going to be the data that we want to send down with this request. We know that that is the new page, so we can just do exactly the same thing. So we can say articles pagination current page plus one. And then we can also pass that only data. So we know that we are fetching just articles and just reloading articles and the fresh articles pagination data as well. Now into here, we can add anything. So we could even add a load more button if this functionality fails, but I'm just going to go ahead and add in loading for now, or we could just add in an empty wrapper in there. Okay, let's try this out. So I'm going to go back to page one here and let's scroll down and see what happens. And you can see sure enough, that data gets loaded in. We've got loading in here, which hasn't actually worked at the moment. And that is because we need to provide the always option to this. Because we want this to consistently observe, not just once, it's always going to stop at the second page because the once functionality of this will just kick in and we'll only see this once. So we're just going to say always in here. And that's going to consistently now, if we just scroll down, trigger, then it's going to trigger again and just keep triggering all the way down. So you can see now that I can just effortlessly scroll down the page and we get nice infinite scrolling. Let's take this a step further. We'll go over to our article seeder and let's go ahead and reseed this. So just to clear everything out, let's use article query and delete. So we just destroy everything beforehand. I'm going to go ahead and bump this down to just 100 articles, just so it's a little bit more manageable. And then let's go ahead and rerun our seeder here, which will clear that out for us. OK, great. So let's go over and just give this a refresh and take away the page here. And yeah, so sure enough, this still works, but we only have 100 articles. So eventually we reach the bottom. Now we've still got this loading indicator here, which wouldn't ordinarily be shown, but what we could do is control what we see here. So for example, we could do something like you have reached the end and you could show that either just always, or you could add a condition onto here. So for example, we could say V if articles pagination current page, is equal to the articles pagination. And let's just check our length aware paginator again, just to see what data we've got in here. Uh, we've got last page. So we could check if that equals the last page, in which case we'll show you have reached the end. So now let's just try that again. Again, getting rid of this page in here, scroll all the way down to the end. And we don't see that, so it's probably a good idea to say grace than or equal to, because it might bump up the page number depending on where we are. So if we just scroll down now, all the way to the end, you've reached the end. So there's a ton of stuff you could do with this, but the whole point of combining these two features, at least until there is a specific infinite scroll component release for V2, is we don't need to write much code up here at all. In fact, with the solution that we've created, we could just completely get rid of that load more. So there we go. We haven't had to write any of our own JavaScript code to merge in the data that we get back from the client. This makes it a lot easier. But you have the option to just do load more if you want using prop merging, or you can use the when visible component to go ahead and use the intersection observer API for infinite scroll.